going on YouTube? Clover Bells here, back with another Scarlet Violet video. And today we're going to be spotlighting Palafin, but not in the sense that we've done it before. Okay, we're actually going to be looking at how it's declined in usage, right? So normally when we do videos like this, right, we've always highlighted certain niche Pokemon and how uh, they have some specific role in the meta at the moment or how certain Pokemon or certain teams are on the rise. Today we're actually going to be doing the opposite and note how Palafin has declined in usage and actually the Palafin balance has also uh, technically declined a little bit more. And we have some evidence to prove that it has declined because if we take a look at the Portland Regionals, right? Um, note that if you take a look at the top 36, how many Palafin uh, do you see on these teams, right? So I'm looking at the top eight and we highlighted this when we talked about our tournament recap, but there's no Palafin in the top eight. Uh, actually, no, wait, uh, there is some Palafin in the top eight. There's two, <laughs> I meant in the top four, but there's only two in the top eight. And then as you go further down, there's another one at ninth, but then after that, look at this. There's like Azumarils, there's Iron Bundles, there's, you know, Gyaradoses, but then there's maybe one other Palafin here at 25th, but then up to here, like 32nd, uh, there's just, that's it, you know, right here, 41. Out of the top 41 teams from Portland, only four Palafin, okay? And that's that says something. We went from like the most dominant archetype. Oh, okay, I wouldn't say dominant, maybe like the most commonly used archetype in the Palafin balance to now it not being as common, um, you know, as it once was before. Now, when I say declined and not as common, okay, I don't mean not good, okay? I still think it's pretty good, okay? But it has dropped in usage, especially the Palafin in particular. Um, some people have gone with uh, different water type options, which we'll uh, discuss, of course. Um, but we're gonna take a look at why Palafin has actually dropped in usage uh, and see if it's actually still gonna do relatively well in some of these upcoming regionals and tournaments because we still have Hartford coming up this weekend and also like, you know, there's still another month of the format. Now, um, do I expect the Palafin balance or Palafin in general to still do uh, relatively well and get some top cut placements? Yes, I do. I still think, uh, you know, with proper positional play, the fact that it's still a balanced team and it has, you know, options or ways to deal with other kinds of teams, uh, it really just depends on the player playing it. I still think it can do all right. But, you know, as a, if you take a look at, you know, where it once was, you know, in the beginning where it was everywhere, you know, especially like in Fort Wayne, I don't think it'll ever get back to that point. Um, and there's a couple of reasons, right? right. So um, this video is meant to discuss some of those reasons. And, you know, if you're having trouble against Palafin or Palafin balance in general, maybe this will uh, help you out there, especially if you're going to uh, some of these upcoming tournaments. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, so one reason why I believe the Palafin has uh, declined a little bit in effectiveness is because the re-emergence of these two Pokemon, the Iron Hands and the Iron Bundle. So when I say re-emerges, you know, I don't necessarily mean that they ever left the meta at any given time. They were still around, of course, right? They're, they were very, they're very, very good Pokemon in terms of the Paradox Pokemon, but uh, they took a bit in usage a little bit, all right? And that's also what allowed Palafin to, you know, excel, uh, as well as Gyarados for that matter. But uh, they have started to rise again recently, okay? Especially the Iron Bundle. Uh, and if we take a look at, you know, some of the Portland results, uh, just to back up our claim here. So if you take a look at the top eight, there is one, two, three, four iron bundle in the top eight. All right, that says something, okay? And then if we keep scrolling down there, you'll also find a little bit more iron bundle. So there's here in 13th and 14th place. All right, you know, and look at the 19, 20, 21, 22, 20, a lot of iron bundle. And you know, Palafin doesn't really wanna go anywhere near the iron bundle because of this move, freeze dry, right? So with freeze dry, you know, you're just able to do super effective damage, especially against water types. Um, Palafin doesn't want to have to deal with that. So Iron Bundle has become a very useful tool once again against that. Uh, and then the Iron Hands, especially, right? With, of course, your electric move uh, with Wild Charge or, you know, Thunder Punch, but of course, Wild Charge being the more common. Um, you know, just this base stat of 140 uh, is able to deal very, very big damage against the Palafin. And you can't even really deal big damage against these two in general because Iron Hands is super bulky physically. Look at this HP stat, all right? 154 and base 108 defense. And then Iron Bundle is of course a water type uh, with also very, very good defenses uh, in physical defense, I should say. So, you know, your jet punches and wave crashes are only gonna do like minimal chip damage against both of these mons. Um, so that's another reason why I believe the Palafin has declined a little bit, right? So if you're struggling against a Palafin, you know, then I, the first question I'm gonna ask you is, do you have an Iron Bundle slash Iron Hands on your team? Because if not, then, you know, I look no further than that, okay? So you gotta have something for that. But then uh, another reason, okay, if we take a look, 
is this Pokemon right here. Actually, the Fluttermane is also doing relatively well because they are now running the tech move of Thunderbolt on their tool set, right? And with electric coverage, you know, if you don't have an Iron Hands, then you got to run an electric move on Fluttermane, mainly for like Gyarados, okay? Uh, but now it's also useful against Palafin by default because, you know, you are still a water type in general. Um, so Thunderbolt coverage, especially if it's like a choice specs variant, uh, you're going to deal a lot of damage uh, into the Palafin matchup, right? And Palafin doesn't want to go anywhere near a Fluttermane, even though you can't technically jet punch it. See, the thing is they're meant to EV uh, their Fluttermanes to be super bulky and then be able to take those jet punches, especially with like Terra Water, which, you know, some of them are, or even like another kind of terror where you're able to resist that. But um, if you just do like a simple EV spread like this, okay, where you go uh, just into the defenses like this, yeah, this will, uh, even without the Terra option, right? Even without the Terra, you're just able to survive a Adamant Mystic Water Jet Punch anyway, non-Terra, okay? So by that logic, if you're able to just survive that, then, you know, you just KO it right back with Thunderbolt, right? And then you don't even need the Terra Water. So if we take a look at some of these results here, let's see how many like Palafins run Thunderbolt. So let's take a look at this one. So for Joe's team, of course, there's a Thunderbolt. That's already one. All right, second place team from Ding Show. All right, did you have Thunderbolt? Yes, you did. There's another Thunderbolt and there's a there's an Iron Bundle here. Okay, so you don't want to go anywhere near this team with a Palafin. How about Ophimezi's team? Did he have one? He did. All right, so that's already three Flutter mains that had Thunderbolt, okay? Uh, I know for a fact Nick and um, Jones didn't have Thunderbolt here. What about some of these guys? Did did uh, Len have one? Um, I don't know if he did. Okay, this one did not have Thunderbolt. I, I think Caleb had one, right? So Caleb, did you have one? Yeah, you did. So another one with Thunderbolt, Fluttermane. So again, you know, Thunderbolt, Fluttermane is actually great coverage against the Palafin. Um, you know, it's, meant, it's mainly meant for Gyarados a little bit more, but of course, by default, you're just able to target uh, the Palafin by that logic, okay? So... That's another reason why, uh, you know, uh, the Palafin matchup gets a little bit tricky, you know, if you're one that's using Palafin. So you got to be aware of these Flutter mains carrying Thunderbolt. Not, not all of them have them, okay, but a lot of them do now. So just be aware. Okay, another reason why I feel like people have the, started to defer away from the Palafin is they want other water type options that can give them a little bit more options and flexibility into other types of matchups just because of the toolkit that they have. So I'm also looking specifically at Gyarados and I'm also looking at Azumarill, right? So what do these two offer that Palafin can't do, right? So first of all, Gyarados, if you know, uh, it can be run a multiple ways, right? You can run Waterfall with Thunder Wave, uh, Taunt, and then uh, some other move here, we usually Protect, uh, but this is a, a filler slot. It could be Helping Hand, it could be Iron Head, uh, it could be Protect, um, you know, or just some ground move. But ideally, what are you getting when you have Thunder, uh, Gyarados as opposed to Palafin? You get an Intimidate Pokemon, okay? You get a Flying type because, you know, Gyarados is flying. And then you're able to get a little bit more immunity against Tinglu. So that's great. You get um, Speed Control with Thunder Wave and Icy Wind, okay? Then you get Taunt, which you're going to use against a lot of these Amoonguses because nobody likes Amoongus. You don't want to get Spored uh, and you don't want to have to deal with Rage Powder. So great variance there. That's already like multiple different ways to use Gyarados that Palafin can't quite give you, right? With Palafin, you're either clicking a Jet Punch, which is a priority move, and then you're clicking a hard-hitting Wave Crash. But that's it. What else are you doing with Palafin, okay? Yes, I understand it's that's the job it's supposed to do. It's meant to be a cleaner, uh, um, you know, a potential sweeper, whereas Gyarados is not. It's meant to be more supportive. But most people have offense with their other options on their team, so they don't really need the offense from Palafin. They'd rather have the support style with the Gyarados to give them a little bit more flexibility in certain matchups, right? So that's one reason. Okay, then you have Azumarill, okay? And, you know, with just the options that you have with super power, not super power, huge power, okay? And then you run like Aqua Jet, okay? Then you run like Ice Spinner, and then you run like the other water move that you have, what, what is it called? Um, not Chilling Water, but uh, it was another, yeah, Liquidation, okay? And then you can even run Protect in this last slot. All right, uh, unless you're like an assault variant, then uh, you run a, a fourth move here. But look at this. Oh yeah, it's play rough. Then you have the assault vest. So now what are you doing with Aqu Azumarill, right? You have Aqua Jet, so you still get your priority move just like Palafin. Granted, it'll do like less damage, of course, because you know, it's weaker, but it's still pretty strong, especially if you have huge power. And then if you couple this with like 
uh, a Qian Pao. So that already compensates, okay? And then, you know, with the Assault Vest, now you're bulkier than the Palafin. So that's good, okay? Then you get Fairy Coverage with Play Rough, okay? Which is great into the Rune Pokemon because they're all Dark types. So you have a Fairy move that can hit them for super effective damage, which is good news for you. Then you also get, you know, Fairy Coverage against the Dragons, which is also very good because think about the dragons that are common in the meta. You got Dragonite, you got Garchomp, you got Excalibur, okay, you got Roaring Moon. All of these dragons are weak to play rough. So, you know, Azumarill gives you that over the Palafin, so that's good. And then, of course, you still get um, your physical uh, non-priority water move and liquidation, so that's always nice. And then you even get Ice Spinner, okay, which is great into, you know, removing terrains from Indeedee stuff. So that's also really nice as well. And then you can also click this into stuff like Amoongus. It's not going to KO, of course, but it's still going to do, like, considerable uh, big chip damage, um, you know, all things considered, right? So, that's also a, a, an idea to use with Azumarill. And if you look at some of these teams, a lot of them have it, either the Gyarados or um, the Azumarill in that Palafin slot, right? So, for example, over here, you know, with Ophimezi's team, because he's running, like, Great Tusks, Gyarados makes sense here because you're, it's another flying target that you're able to use that will give you immunity against another Team Lu, and you get an Intimidate option on your team, um, along with speed control because you also have Thunder Wave here. So it, it makes a lot of sense here to have it the, the Gyarados fill that role. Uh, and then over here, uh, where is it? I, I, I saw it earlier. I don't remember if I found it again. Uh, where is the, the Gyarados here? Yeah. Um, oh, wait. This is this is another one, right? Uh, this is what I wanted to look at here. Gavin Michael's team, right? So can you, you can technically just imagine Palafin in this slot, right? as opposed to Azumarill. But here, he decided with the Azumarill, right? And it's a Life Orb set with Protect rather than the Assault Vest variant, which is pretty cool if all things considered, because now you're dealing a lot more damage than you normally would because the Assault Vest is on the uh, the Iron Hands here. So this is actually pretty cool. And then you couple this with the, the Pelipper here, and now this Azumarill is doing so much damage. Okay, granted the Palafin can do a lot of damage in a Rain Team too, but it's nice to have um, a little bit more of a fairy coverage over here. So I kind of like this from Gavin Michaels. Uh, makes a lot of sense here. Okay, then if I go down here, look at this from Randy's team. Okay, Randy, all right, this, you could easily just imagine a Palafin in this team, right? With, you know, Backscalloper, uh, Arcanine, Amoongus, Tinglu, Fluttermane. This could have also been a Palafin. But Randy said, no, I'm going to go with the Azumarill. And I'm going to go with a Choice Band set. Okay, so now instead of Life Orb, I'm just dealing even more damage, Okay. And I'm also going to add Brick Break here, you know, just in case for, for screens and, and stuff like that, because snow teams are having a bomb of snow with, you know, uh, Aurora Veil stuff. So this also helps there. But again, you could definitely see how you're able to just swap out the Palafin and just go with another Fairy option and still also have a Flood on the team, might I add. So that's also pretty cool as well. But you get the idea. So you're able to run these other water types that can give you a little bit more uh, options, you know, as opposed to the Palafin, which is just mainly an attacker. Okay, so that, that's all I wanted to say with the, these two. All right, let's take a look at another thing. Okay, another thing to look at is if you're playing a Dondozo team, uh, a lot of times now you'll be seeing Terra Blast, Terra Grass, right? And that's another tool against Palafin uh, because, you know, they're start, they're, they run Haze, you know, for Dondozo. So Dondozo says, you know what, I'm going to run something for you. And I'm going to be running Terra Blast, Terra Grass. This has been done, you know, for, for weeks now. But if we just take a look at the Portland Regionals, um, some of these Dondozo teams, let's take a look. So let's look at Austin and Matthew's team first, you know, both 20 and 21. Uh, very, you know, same six, just different sets. So let's look at Austin's teams first. Yeah, see, look, there's Terra Blast, Terra Grass. There's also an Iron Bundle on this team. Okay, and there's even Terra Grass, Glamora here. So Palafin's going to have himself a, a bit more, a bit of an, a hard time here against Austin's team. If we take a look at Matthew's team, same idea, you know, Terra Blast, Terra Grass with an Iron Bundle. And there's a Terra Grass Glamora. And then if we scroll down here, all right, if we take a look at Sean's team here, uh, with Sean, again, same idea. Um, you have Terra Blast, Terra Grass, and again, it's, there's a Glamora here with Energy Ball, might I add. So now that's also not so great for you uh, in terms of, uh, you know, having something against a Palafin. And then if we look at um, Chase teams over here, Mr. Chase, yep, same thing, right? Terra Blast, Terra Grass, there's a Glamora with energy ball and an iron bundle so lots of different tools um for these these palafin users so it, it, it you almost don't want to bring it right the only thing you can really do is just maybe bring it for chi Yu. but then the other five it just doesn't feel so great right so 
I don't know. Uh, the Palafin probably struggles in this kind of matchup as well. You know, yes, I understand you have Haze, but yeah, what about like the Bondal and the Glamour? It's going to get a little bit hard to remove with, with those two. So that's another thing that I've noticed. You know, a lot of them, they, they these Nandoza teams, it's always like Iron Bundle or like Glamour stuff with the, the Terra Grass option. So it makes it really difficult um, to even consider bringing the Palafin in that matchup. So uh, that's another thing I also wanted to say. All right, last two reasons that I want to mention as far as contributors to the decline in Palafin is the Amoongus, right? So, uh, of course, Amoongus never never left the meta, never rose in the meta, never decreased in the meta. It is always within the top five, okay? It stays where it stays. It does what it needs to do always. You know, it's the premier bulky grass type, you know, with Rage Powder, you know, redirection support. And if you consider what Palafin has, you know, with Jet Punch and Wave Crash, these are single target moves. And Amoongus is just able to redirect both of them uh, into itself, which does not very effective damage because you are a grass type, right? So um, that's also one reason. And then the Sun teams, right? Either it's Murko Sun with, you know, with Murko Sunny Day or Torkoal, you know, bringing out the Sun, which is important, right? Because, you know, Palafin, you're a water type. And what kind of damage are you doing, you know, as a water type in, against Sun teams? Not much, right? Your, your damage is reduced. So, you know, with Sun teams rising a little bit more, you know because of the results that we saw from portland but not just portland just other online tournaments in general and like ladder usage sun teams are always very popular uh it, the palafin gets a little bit tricky to use in some of those games right so you know that coupled with iron bundle iron hands thunderbolt you know flutter main a little bit more usage from gyarados and azumarill as for different matchups and then you know don dozo's having you know different counters to to palafin you know mainly being terra grass terra blast it, the there's no question or no real debate as to why the Palafin uh, has declined in usage, right? Now, is it unplayable? Like I said in the beginning of the video, of course not. Palafin is still very strong. It's still very good, okay? It's just not as good or it's not as dominant as it was in the beginning of the Regulation C format, all right? So that's all I want to say for now, folks. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of tips on how to deal with Palafin or if you are a Palafin user, you know, maybe it helped give you some ideas as to why you might not be able to bring it in certain matchups or why it just doesn't feel great, you know, in a lot of your games as of late, just because of some of the options that we talked about in this video. All right. If you're going to, you know, Hartford Regionals, best of luck. If you're going to a future other regional, you know, whether it be Milwaukee or Fresno, or if you're going to, you know, play in some of your upcoming local tournaments or maybe some online ranked ladder play. Okay, and you need a team, definitely check out coaching on the channel. You know, we've been doing a lot of it for some of these regionals. Uh, if you take a look at the video description below or in the comment section, there is a link where you can join the channel and sign up for coaching. It's a team building session, might I add. Okay, it's a tier three sub where you're able to schedule a one-on-one -on -one Discord call with me. We build a team from scratch. I show you how to do all the EV spreads uh, and then we get you that team that you need to be able to do well uh, into some of these tours. Or if you already have a, a team yourself, and you just want me to look at it and fix it up a little bit based on the current meta at the moment that's a tier two sub to the channel uh same idea check the link check the video description um or check the comment section uh and you should be able to join the channel with the tier two sub if that is something that you're more interested in as opposed to team building all right we'll be back with another video in the next one folks peace out and have a good night